Hi, uh, welcome to this particular module. Uh, in the last module, we have seen uh, thermal evaporation system and in fact, uh, we were discussing about thin film deposition uh, and in thin film deposition or it is also called vacuum deposition because we require vacuum to improve the mean free path uh, that is the atoms before it collides to the gas molecule inside a chamber. So, if you have a mean free path which is longer the deposition would be better. So, if for that you have a higher you need a higher vacuum and because the deposition occurs in vacuum it is also called vacuum deposition technique. So, now when we talk about thin film deposition we also discussed about three different techniques for first one was uh, thermal evaporation, second one was electron beam evaporation and third one is the sputtering. Now, all three techniques are physical comes under physical vapor deposition techniques. Now, uh, we further discuss that the thermal evaporation and e beam evaporation are electrical way of depositing the film while spot ring would be a mechanical way of uh, depositing a film. What do you mean by electrical way? What do you mean by mechanical way? We will look in the into these lectures further. Uh, uh, if you recall in thermal operation what we do? We have a boat or a source on which we will a uh, boat in which we load the source. So, for example, uh, this is the metal that I want to deposit. I will load on the boat and then I will heat it right by applying a high voltage. Now, because this is a metal board what will happen when you apply voltage because there is a metal, metal has a low resistance the flow of current is extremely high and that is why I square R heat will be generated this will start heating when my board starts heating or the holder for the source starts heating the source inside the holder also starts heating and when it starts heating because the source melting point that is this black dot that melting point is lower compared to the board that is the holder this this will melt first and will start evaporating while the boat will not be affected. The difficulty or the limitation in the thermal evaporation is that when your source temperature that is this black dot its temperature is or melting point is extremely high or is equal to the holder temperature. That means, if I heat it this will not melt until it reaches temperature which is equivalent to it or it requires higher melting point than this. So, that is a difficulty because then in that case the, the holder will start evaporating. We do not want holder to get evaporated, we only want the source inside the holder to get evaporated. That is why this holder is also called source holder, alright. This is a source which is a black this button in my hand and this is my, uh, my hand itself this uh, uh, palm is my uh, source holder. Source holder melting point should be extremely high compared to the source that is holding. So, what is then uh, how we can overcome this limitation? Now, what kind, of, what kind of materials would have such a high melting point? So, example is silicon dioxide, example is silicon nitride, right? Uh, BSG and PSG and lot of other films are there that we can grow, uh, but it cannot grow inside the uh, thermal or using the thermal operation. So, if you see here in the slide, today we will be looking at electron beam evaporation ok. And in this case you see this is what I was talking about source holder, source holder ok. In which this button that I was showing let us say it is like this right. We can also have source holder like coil like this. Okay. And let us say we want to deposit aluminum then this aluminum wires would be loaded onto this coil like this. So, what will happen if I apply a voltage through this particular coil or across this coil what will happen? There is a flow of high current I right and because of that the, the resistance here is R and that will be I square R heating which will heat up the aluminum wires that are loaded onto this particular foil or coil. In this case same thing if I apply a voltage across the board because of high flow of current because this is a resistance it is a metal I will be extremely high. So, again there will be I square R heating and this will start heating up 
and the source inside the boat will start melting right. In this case aluminum is our source, in this case also we can have aluminum chunk or we can have other metals that we want to deposit right. This is the uh, principle of thermal evaporation. The difficulty comes when the melting point of the source is extremely high compared to the source holder melting point right that is a difficulty. So, to, to overcome that difficulty we go for electron beam evaporation and then we will see how this electron beam uh, evaporation helps to overcome this particular limitation of the thermal evaporation or posed by thermal evaporation. So, what is electron beam evaporation? Electron beam evaporation is a physical vapor deposition that means PVD process that allows the user to evaporate materials that are difficult or even impossible to deposit using standard thermal evaporation technique. So, some of these materials include high temperature materials and some ceramics. Now, you see here uh, this is a schematic representation of how the electron beam will help to melt the material that is loaded inside the source holder. Understand that in this case we cannot use the metal uh, uh, board that we were using earlier. In this case because we are not heating this board ok, we are using electron beam to directly this is a. So, in this case this is called crucible, crucible. Okay. and there can be quads. So, quads has an extremely high melting point. Inside the crucible we will load up uh, uh, let us say material and the electron beam as you can see here I uh, will come to the point that electron beam will hit this particular uh, source and the source will start melting and it will start evaporating. Okay. So, uh, since the electron beam uh, is at extremely high temperature it is a focused beam uh, it will melt the uh, the source material. So, here you can see here this is an electron gun through which the electrons uh, are uh, uh, you know uh, this is actually deflection magnet I am sorry this is a electron gun here this is a filament. So, through which the electrons are uh, uh, incident through the uh, accelerating electrode, accelerating electrode will accelerate the electron beam further and then there is a deflecting magnet which is here. So, this deflecting magnet will help the electron to deflect and to be incident onto this particular source. So, when the electrons uh, beam is <laughs> deflected and incident onto the source, the source will start melting and once it starts melting it will start evaporating. You can change the, uh, the amount of deflection and you can use a different way of uh, evaporating that is called point uh, way of uh, uh, evaporating that means, the, so the electron beam will only point at one place which is let us say here. In other case, it will go for a scanning, it can be raster scan, it goes like this, okay. or it can be triangular wave, so it can be load do like this. Okay. So, there are different way of evaporating the material, each has advantages and disadvantages, you do not have to worry about that uh, too much. Right now, you understand that electron beam will overcome the limitation posed by thermal evaporation, as electron beam will directly uh, melt the source which is loaded onto the crucible. Okay. So, uh, what you see here there is a shield ok, it is called shield. What is the use of this shield that until the, med, the until this source see what happens is let me go to a previous slide and let me just show it to you um, ok. Let us take this example it is easy because we have already drawn here ok. okay. So, in the case of why you require that shield? Hmm? I will show it to you, just bear with me for one second. Okay. So, now you have a chamber okay? and here you have your substrate holder and on this substrate holder you have loaded let us say two silicon wafers. All right. And then this is your metal, let us say it is aluminum, and you are going to uh, heat this source holder by applying a voltage V. Cool. Now, it when you start heat when this source holder starts heating, this will start melting and it will start evaporating, is not it? But we want to know what is 
we want to actually have a repeatable thickness of the film repeatable thickness that means that every time I want 1 micron it should not be one time 1 micron one time it will be 1.1 or one time it can be 0 0.9 this is not what I am looking because that is a very big difference of 10 percent if I have 1 and if I have 1.1 or if I have 1 and if I have 0 0.9 it is a difference of 10 percentage right which is a very big difference or very big error that is why I want every time my thickness to be 1 micron. So, what can I do once I know that so there is a shield here. So, when, when it starts initially melting no it the only it will deposit on the shield it will not reach on your substrate holder this is substrate holder and these are your substrates. Now, if you remember our previous lectures you will understand what are substrate substrate can be semiconductor substrate can be insulator right substrate can be conductor anything anything on which you are going to deposit a metal or a material to form a device or a film is your substrate ok base material. So, right now also one more thing is how would you know what is the thickness of your material when you deposit a material right how would you know it will reach that particular thickness. So, first is that you will not open the shield until this starts melting properly once it is melting then you will open the shield when you open the shield what will happen that it will start. So, when you open the shield let me just uh, you bear with my drawing let us say the shield is open now. So, you can the, the then the material will start depositing onto your onto your substrate right like this. But before that I also want what is the thickness and what is the rate of evaporation what is it rate of evaporation and another one is thickness of film thickness of my film and rate of evaporation that also I want to know how would I know. So, there are before we open the shield before we open the shield the there is a quartz crystal on which this deposition will occur along with the shield and this quartz crystal will tell you what is the rate of evaporation how it will tell you what is the rate of evaporation because if you know quartz is a quartz is a piezoelectric material now see uh, sometimes i ask very simple questions even uh, in the interviews right and people are confused between piezo electric and piezo resistive. What is the difference in piezo resistive when you apply a voltage there is or when you apply a pressure there is change in resistance in piezoelectric when you apply a pressure there is change in voltage difference piezo resistive and piezoelectric difference is when you apply a pressure there is change in resistance in case of piezo resistive while in case of piezoelectric when you apply a pressure there is change in voltage. Now, quartz quartz crystal I said what we have here quartz crystal monitor q c m quads stands uh, q stands for quads c stands for crystal and m stands for monitor. So, we have a quads crystal monitor inside the vacuum chamber to know the rate of deposition once you have a rate of deposition then you can open this particular shield and let the material deposit on the substrate ok. This quads has a piezoelectric property that means, if there is a deposition of a material onto this quartz crystal there is a change in the voltage and that voltage is corresponding or already the uh, parameter is set in such a way that we know what will be the change in voltage for particular thickness of the film. So, this goes to the electronics which is already fed the the change in the voltage versus deposition rate. 
So, uh, depending on how fast it is depositing your rate of evaporation would change that means, it will be angstrom per second generally rate of evaporation is given by angst in the unit called angstrom per second all right. So, we know the rate of deposition. Now, if you know the rate of deposition that means that when you open the uh, shield ok, when you open the shield then this will start depositing and it starts depositing what will happen? When we start depositing what will happen? That the substrate the film be deposit on the substrate. Again we want to stop after we reach 1 micron right. So, to stop it as soon as it reaches 1 micron we will again put the shield back. So, that even this because you see when it is at high melting point it will not suddenly cool down right. It will take some time to cool down if we if we uh, make the voltage uh, we bring the voltage back to 0 right. From let us say 100 volts if I bring back to 0 it will take some time for the material to cool down. So, it will keep on depositing, but if I have reached 1 micron I do not want further deposition. So, this shield will stop the deposition onto the substrate further as soon as I reach my uh, uh, optimized thickness of the material. So, that is a that is a way to uh, there, there is a way the shield will help and that is the role of shield. Uh, it is there in uh, so this is sealed for source that can be sealed for substrate as well ok. So, having said that uh, what are other things here that you can use uh, you can see here you see here uh, that the electron beam will uh, see I will show you this particular uh, uh, picture focus on this again you can see the shield in both the cases the shield is here ok. In this case, the electron beam will come here and it will incident onto this particular source. All right. So, if I if I delete it, you will be able to see that this particular area. You will see there is an aluminum here. Okay. You can see it is aluminum here, and this hole that you see here that is through which the electron will come and will be incident onto this aluminum material ok. And then there are electronics related to that and then there are the substrate is cooled because you see the, this this uh, crucible will also get heated up. So, you have to cool down the crucible. So, there is a way to cool down the crucible from the back side using uh, uh, water uh, at, a, at a low temperature or a cool cooled water right is flowed across the crucible. Uh, I told you about the and this this photographs are within the vacuum chamber ok. These are from within the vacuum chamber ok. Now, one more thing that I wanted to tell is that uh, uh, to generate this electron beam what we require? We require electric current right that is why this is also called electrical way of depositing a material. In thermal evaporation also we require voltage right and in this case also we require an electric current that when we apply to the filament to generate the electrons uh, and to generate a high electric field and this field what it will cause? The field will cause uh, electrons in the filament to escape and since there are accelerating electrode it will help to accelerate further. Uh, the electron beams then will be like we discussed will be uh, focused by magnets to form a beam right and directed towards the crucible that contains your source material. Okay. Uh, let us go to this next one and you will be here able to see that different things are there you see deposition you can see here this one very clearly right. This is your deposition monitor what is it at what is that now you know the secret what is it? It is a quartz crystal monitor Q C M all right. Then this is a uh, 8 uh, cc hearth which is helped to hold the crucible then there is a electron beam filament there is a there are electrical supply and as I told you we require water cooling to cool down the crucible ok. Uh, now, if you uh, what is written here let us read it 
thermal evaporation suffers from contamination by evaporation of crucible materials and this process is not sufficient to evaporate high melting points material we already know this. So, electron beam is used to overcome this problems and we know how it can overcome now it uses water cool crucible or in the depression of water cold copper hearth the electrons are thermonically uh, emitted from heated filaments, but are shielded from direct line of sight of the evaporation charge uh, and substrate. The filament cathode assembly potential is biased negatively because then it will it will reflect the electron and deflect the electrons further with respect to the nearby anode, anode will attract the electrons uh, towards it and that is why it will accelerate it further. The, the magnetic field uh, that is applied will help to deflect the electron beam all the way to 270 degree centigrade, uh, 270 degree uh, is in circular arc. Uh, it is not, not centigrade okay, 270 degrees uh, this is a deflection we are talking about uh, and focus it on the hearth and evaporation charge at the ground potential. If you just want to quickly see the video I will let me play the video and then you will be able to see. An electron beam evaporator a type of physical vapor deposition tool is used to coat one side of a sample with various metals. Commonly used metals on this machine include aluminum, platinum, gold, chrome, nickel, copper, once a sample has been loaded, the chamber will be closed. The chamber is then pumped down to a very low pressure. The machine then releases electricity through a filament. Several magnets are used to direct the electron beam from the filament to a crucible containing the target metal. The metal then heats up and begins to evaporate onto the shutter. This process can take several minutes. This is similar to a pot of boiling water on a hot stove. A sensor within the chamber is used to determine the current rate of evaporation. Once the desired rate is reached, the shutter is open and the sample is exposed to the evaporating metal. The desired rate of evaporation and the amount of metal to be evaporated can be set under the deposition controller. Once the desired amount of metal has been evaporated, the shutter is closed. The pressure inside the chamber is then increased to atmospheric pressure and the chamber is opened. So, what you see what we are able to see is how the electron beam evaporator work in the in the last video you were able to see how the electron beam evaporator work. Now, let us further see that uh, what are the power densities and what are the equation that that are uh, responsible to generate this electron field and finally, for the thermoionic emission uh, uh, th uh, and, and also we will see that uh, how the evaporation flux uh, has a laminar flow uh, and so on and so forth. This is a little bit of uh, fundamentals that you require to understand not just the system that is there, but what are the fundamentals or equations that rule the uh, or, or that are responsible for operating this particular system right. A uh, physics of it, uh, a science of it is always important for engineer to understand not just the engineering portion, but to take science along with engineering and to make a further device ok. So, when you use any system try to understand the the uh, the chemistry or the physics or mathematics uh, the equations that are responsible for the system to work and then comes the next part what is engineering drawings and to make a system and then the next part of combining the both and to apply it right. So, this is a, a complete and that is why we, we see the 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 focus of this particular lecture is also from systems engineering point of view introduction to neuroscience and neuro instrumentation right. So, it is just just understanding about uh, the, the basics of science, but also applied of uh, ap application of the science. So, let us see quickly how the e beam operation works and then we will take it to therm magnetron sputtering. Uh, then I will give you very simple example of how the EEG electrodes or a patch can be deposited. It is so easy you will you will love it. Uh, so, let us see the slide once again you see that in electron beam operation the practical power densities if you see the slide uh, uh, is around 10 kilowatt per centimeter square uh, uh, and these are utilized in melting metals, but dielectric requires only 1 to 2 kilowatt. Uh, so, th that is what is required only 1 to 2 kilowatt per centimeter square. Now, contamination level of deposited film using E beam operation is less than other PVD and that is why it is better and like I said the electron density J e leaving the hot filament is due to the thermionic emissions and is explained as you would very well know 
is uh, uh, exp expressed by Richardson equations uh, which is given here where you can say A is a Richardson constant and it is given by 1.2 into 10 to the power 6 uh, A power by m, m square which is uh, 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 ampere by m square and Q is given by 1.602 to 10 to the power 9 minus 19 coulomb and phi is the work function of the material. You will know about the phi when you look at the semiconductor and metal junctions or metal metal junctions. It is a, a whole different area when you talk about physics of semiconductor devices. We will not go into detail about the work function other places right now. We want to know that what are the equations related to the electron beam evaporation system and you will see that near the evaporator surface the evaporator flux shows a laminar flow. Uh, um, and uniformity of thickness can be described by your cosine law. So, you will see that generally uh, we, we keep the substrate at the at 90 degree with respect to the source material. Why it is at 90 degree? Because of the cosine law the maximum deposition will occur at the uh, when the substrate is kept at 90 degree compared to the other places of the chamber. In the chamber why not you put substrate here or here why only you put in the center right and that too also at uh, exactly 90 degree with respect to source is because of this same reason. Okay. So, let me go to the next one. Now, when you talk about uh, electron beam evaporation you should also know the electron beam sources. So, you see the first source which is uh, shown here it is called single pocket source and a water cooled copper block is bored out to have a pocket uh, in the shape of inverted torque truncated cone and you can see here that it goes like this and further it goes like this that is why it's called, it looks like a cone. Uh, source material is placed within the pocket or within the crucible with exterior fits a magnet structure consisting of permanent magnet and two pole extensions are located around the block such that these fill lines runs parallel to one of the sides of the block. You can read it further uh, uh, that uh, how this uh, electron beam is steered it is similar to the, the one that we discussed earlier it is 270 degree arc to impinge on the center of pocket and the electron beam energy is controlled such that magnetic field will bend it precisely to the center of pocket. Now, what is the advantage and then uh, and as we mentioned earlier an elect electromagnetic coil known as sweep coil is employed to effectively raster the beam around the contents of the pocket or to even the uh, evenly heat the source and it is also called x y sweeping. Okay. So, you can have a point source, you can have x y sweeping, you can have raster scan, you can have triangular uh, sweeping and many more. The advantage is there is only one substrate uh, source material here, but uh, so that the, the complexity of the system will be less, but the disadvantage is that you cannot deposit multiple material. Uh, to do that you have uh, two options either you go for the rot rotary pocket or you go for the linear pocket. Now, as the name itself says rotary that means that the this is the one pocket that you can see there are multiple sources uh, behind this shield. So, when you want to deposit one material the electron beam will uh, will uh, heat this particular material uh, here this one and then when you are done with that then you can rotate the material. So, what will happen the uh, this guy will go here this guy will come here and this guy will come here. Okay. So, you can rotate the uh, sources and that is why you can deposit multiple materials in the sing single vacuum uh, cycle. So, a rotary pocket electron beam source has all the same parts as single pocket it is similar to this, but it has multiple uh, sources uh, uh, except the water cooled copper is essentially a turret of multiple pockets right there are multiple pockets we, with this design a number of different material can be evaporated sequentially from a common magnet emitter or sweep coil structure. Obviously, this design includes additional shielding to prevent cross contamination this is the additional shielding. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the pocket in a position is chosen via motorized rotary indexer you can select pocket 1 pocket 2 there is a motor which will, uh, will be rotated this particular pocket. The next one uh, again you can do multiple uh, deposition by using a linear pocket and in a linear pocket electron beam source is similar to rotary pocket except that its pockets are linear. So, whatever you want to deposit this will move this way once you are done it, it there is a, a space in this side also. So, if, if this comes here then this guy will come next to it and then you can so it goes all the way it can go back uh, to this side and the last one will, will be focusing on the electron beam. 
So, uh, this is another way of depositing the material. Now, when you talk about uh, uh, dip, uh, depositing you should also know that what are the glow discharge and plasma. Okay. So, the target that is cathode you see here uh, it is easy for you to understand from this particular uh, uh, you know the uh, schematics you, you see here uh, that there is a uh, voltage there is a insulation target and substrates this is a anode and this is uh, the cathode which is your substrate is at the cathode and then you, you can uh, so, so again uh, for we, we are done with electron beam operation. Okay. So, we are done with electron beam operation now we are moving towards sputtering sputtering sputter now, why this word sputter is there right sputter is similar to uh, if you have ever uh, noticed the raindrop falling on the metal roof the raindrop that falls on the metal roof will form a noise similar to sputter right and that is why the word called sputtering came into uh, the uh, the uh, this for this particular system because here also uh, it, it looks like you are you are dislodging the atoms from your uh, target on to the substrate uh, and it goes atom by atom. So, it, it falls like a raindrop on to the substrate. So, that is why the uh, the name sputter came. Uh, anyway, uh, coming back to here, there are different kinds of sputtering. One is called DC sputtering, and one is called RF sputtering. Of course, DC stands for direct current, RF for re, uh, radio frequency uh, way of measure uh, you generating the field. And when you talk about radio frequency, you already know that should be a matching network. There is a frequency generator which is a, which is the at uh, 13.56 megahertz, and then there is a capacitor inductor which which constitutes a matching network. The here the beauty is that the target is at the top and the substrate is at the bottom. The substrates are anode and the target is generally at the cathode region. There is an insulation film outside the chamber so that when you touch the system you will not get any shock. Uh, now, how this happens? See again, it is a vacuum based uh, deposition so we have to connect it to a vacuum. Uh, pump. So, when the vacuum pump is connected the system will be evacuated when the system is evacuated you can insert this sputtering gas when the sputtering gas uh, uh, is, in, is introduced uh, it will start hitting the, the target material uh, and because it starts hitting the atoms from the target material will dislodge and once it dislodges it will get it will start depositing onto this particular substrate. Okay. So, uh, this is how this sputtering works. Uh, now, when you see this you will see a glow discharge here there is some, some purplish color is here uh, and how this glow discharge and uh, plasma is formed. So, that is the, the uh, text that is written here the target cathode typically kilo volts are applied uh, the substrate may be grounded electrically floating uh, heated or cooled that means this particular substrate you can see in this case it is grounded uh, or it can be uh, electrically cooled and it should be. Uh, uh, or it can be electrically floating. After evacuation of the chamber the typically argon is introduced to serve a discharge medium assist uh, sustain visible glow that is also called avalanche breakdown of the medium is maintained between electrodes and a film. Uh, so, in another way if you see the potential between when you apply a potential there is a cathode sheet and then there is anode sheet and here you can see a uniform uh, uh, you know avalanche breakdown medium. Uh, and the positive ions in the discharge glow stick the target and eject the neutral atoms uh, by momentum transfer which is which is this particular atoms are uh, dislodged and it will come down. Uh, these atoms enter the pass through the discharge region to eventually deposit onto the uh, substrate and grow the film. Electrically neutral plasma contains partially ionized gas composed of ions, electrons and neutral species we know that secondary electrons or dissolved gases x-ray photons can be emitted from the target that is a little bit difficulty that uh, there can be generation of x-rays which we do not want in the, in the case of depositing a material. Further if you want to still uh, uh, dig down into the uh, mechanism then let us see, uh, see this is the how it actually happens there is a cathode and then there is a anode on the other side uh, there will be cathode glow the substrate is generally kept at the negative glow and uh, then there is a positive column uh, in between the negative glow and a positive column there will be Faraday dark space and then the, uh, towards the cathode side there will be negative glow and between the substrate and cathode again there is a block and the, again there is a dark space here it is called cathode or Crookes dark space 
ok. So, there is a anode dark space then there is a anode glow. So, if you come from this side to towards the cathode then what you see that there is a anode anode glow then sorry anode anode uh, dark space then there is a uh, anode glow then dark space then positive column ferrite dark space then there is a substrate and then there is negative glow again cathodes are Crookes dark place and finally, cathode glow and cathode. So, the DC glow charge consists of a few luminous uh, region that you can see here uh, adjacent to the cathode there is a highly luminous layer known as the cathode glow where neutralization of the incoming discharge ions and positive cathode ions occurs. The second electron starts to accelerate away from the cathode in this region. Uh, and in between the Crookes dark space a region where nearly all the applied voltage is dropped within this dark space the positive gas ions are accelerated towards the cathode and a distinctive region is called a negative glow which is here uh, uh, where the accelerated electrons acquire enough energy to impact the neutralized gas molecules. Now, beyond this Faraday dark space and the finally, the positive column uh, uh, the substrate is placed inside the negative glow during the sputtering mechanism and the breakdown voltage uh, that is acquired is again given by Pascal's law which is uh, shown here right and here we can see that the P is the chamber pressure and L is the electrode spacing where B is the constant. So, uh, uh, as we uh, saw earlier that uh, electron beam and thermal evaporation uh, thermal evaporation they cons consist under the uh, evaporation kind of uh, system or electrically uh, driven uh, system for depositing a film where in case of sputtering it is a mechanical way. Why mechanical way again? Because in this case you insert argon and argon will target the, uh, the target molecules and atoms they are physically dislodged. When you hit what will happen is let us say you, you take an example of a wall and throw a stone right. The, if the wall is made up of cement the cement particles will be dislodged is not it. Same thing, but at a different level. So, if you have a chamber and it is a high vacuum you have a target if you insert uh, or let the uh, argon you, you, you insert argon gas and the argon gas will hit the uh, target and will dislodge the atoms this atoms that is dislodged will fall down onto the substrate. So, mechanically, mechanically dislodging the atoms from the substrate to grow a film and that is why. So, when you when when this when you dislodge these atoms no the atoms will drop one by one like this tuck 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 and that is why it is kind of sputtering you understand when I was talking about a, a metal roof with a rain drop you will have the same sputter sound right. So, similar to sputtering uh, uh, sputter sound we got sputtering, but in sputtering again if you want to go further uh, there are four types of sputtering one is called DC sputtering, second is called RF sputtering, third if you want to add the magnet uh, to, to, to improve the uh, to, re, to uh, improve the deposition rate and also to, uh, to, to have the uh, uh, sputtering area confined uh, then it is a magnetron sputtering and finally, you have a reactive ion sputtering or reactive sputtering reactive sputtering. So, four kind of sputterings are there and generally in this case we do not use a, 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 a metal uh, chunks or a wire here we use disc ok. So, disc is loaded on to the uh, target. Hmm. Uh, so, like let us say this is a target you have to hold a complete disc instead of uh, 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 holding let us say this is a disc. Uh, and you are holding a complete disc instead of just a chunk that is why the target is at the top right generally. So, as I told you if you see the slide uh, the sputtering techniques can be divided broadly into 4 categories. So, till then you take care I will see you in next module.